Hello once again. Thanks for clicking on this video. We hope that it's informative and uh, helpful to you. Uh, as always, uh, if you have questions or comments or want to learn more about our company, you can click the link in the description below. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, troubleshooting a no-start complaint on a Ford or Chevrolet fitted with a standardine injection pumps. So in this video, we're going to be discussing how to troubleshoot a no-start complaint. And those fall in two categories, a no-start hot and a no-start cold. And we're going to give you some uh, tips and tricks on how to determine what potentially is the problem. And in certain instances, how you might be able to take corrective action without having to purchase a new injection pump. But before we do that, let's take a minute to look at the two different type of systems that were fitted to the Chevrolet and the Ford uh, back in the 1980s and early 90s. So the standard end system that was designed is used on a variety of applications, uh, in industrial, a lot in agricultural, but the probably the most popular was the automotive applications fitted to the Ford and International, which I have an example of here and then to the GMC and Chevrolet, which I have an example here. Um, you can see they're essentially the same system. They use the same type of governor. They use the same fuel distribution, uh, the, the same basic top cover. Um, and so troubleshooting, you can kind of apply the same principles. Uh, the characteristic differences of the pump, uh, on this pump fitted to the 6.2 and 6.5 Chevrolet GMC, you have a uh, triangular or mount, um, and then on the Ford International, you have the traditional circular mount. Um, that's the way you can tell the distinction between the two. But for troubleshooting purposes, and what we're going to talk about today, you can kind of look at them essentially the same. Okay, so let's get right into it. The first step is we need to identify what type of problem that you have. And what we traditionally call a hard start hot or a heat soak complaint, um, that can be best be described as your truck cranks good cold, it runs good. Um, if you drive it for more than 45 minutes or so, uh, you pull off to stop somewhere, maybe to get fuel or go to the grocery store, you come back out, the truck won't start. Give it 30 minutes, 45 minutes, uh, and then it'll crank, and then you can drive it to wherever else you're going. Um, that is the hard start hot complaint. So once you've determined that you've got a hard start uh, hot complaint or heat soak complaint, how can you determine if it is in fact the injection pump um, before you go through the time and energy to, to remove it? Um, the first tool that you'll need, everybody has access to, good old H2O. Uh, if you're in a situation where your truck uh, is not starting and, it, and it's in that heat condition, just apply some cold water to the exterior of the, of the injection pump. You're not going to hurt it. Uh, if it does immediately start, that's a good indication that you've got some issues in the injection pump. Um, for those of you who say, well, I don't want to drive my truck and, and create this condition because you're worried about getting broke down, the other thing you could do is crank your truck cold and what you're going to do is you're going to find this, uh, this is called an advanced pivot arm. And you're going to need a long handle screwdriver. And while you're cranking it and you have it uh, idling, you're going to apply the screwdriver to the base of the pivot arm and you're going to push it all the way in. Now, if your injection pump is functioning properly, the RPM should go down, but the truck shouldn't die. Um, if it does anything other than that, that's a pretty good indication that you've got some issues in the advance of the injection pump and or the head and rotor assembly. And um, for example, if you were to depress the pivot arm and the truck dies, that, that's indicative of a wore out advance. What we most often see is you press the arm in and nothing happens and it continues to idle the same. Uh, there again, that indicates that there's excessive wear in the advance area and the pump's going to have to be addressed. So I'm being told by my cameraman that uh, I'm getting along winded and this is uh, getting kind of lengthy. So um, this is going to end part one of the video. Uh, if you want to uh, delve a little deeper, uh, get your toolbox out, uh, get your hands a little greasy, um, then stay tuned for part two of this video.
Go ahead.